Well, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Glad to have you here. Well, I've been thinking a lot recently, given all the current events that have been going on, about the nature of reality and how it impacts the topics that we study here on this channel that I know you are interested in. Of course, I'm interested in too. You know, we had COVID, uh, the coronavirus start earlier this year, and we had to start wearing, you know, uh, some types of masks to prevent us from spreading it to other people, which is really the main purpose of wearing a mask. I'm actually in favor of this idea. Everything I've researched shows that people that wear masks don't spread it as much, and sometimes they don't get it as much when it's in the air. But recently, we've had these forest fires. I'm out west here. Uh, we've had a lot of smoke. As you can see, it's the middle of the day. It's 1 p.m. and it's dark. All you hear right now are crickets. You don't hear very much going on, not too many birds. It's dark from smoke. We've had to start wearing other types of masks. This is the N95 mask with the valve on it for the smoke, which I should be wearing right now, but I couldn't be making this video for you if I did. And this has got me to thinking whether reality has really ever been normal or whether that's just our story that we've made up about reality. And I think you know what I'm talking about here. Ever since you and I went to school, since we were very little, we were taught a certain version of what reality was. And that idea always seemed to work around this idea of a mainstream set of topics that were considered to be real. And then if you got out on the fringes, these things were considered to be different from the norm and perhaps even less real. And this is where a lot of paranormal topics have been kind of placed over the years uh, with no small help from the U.S. government and the Air Force with respect to the topic of UFOs. But it's not just there. It's with all these topics. And it's got me to thinking, perhaps those phenomena are reality and it's our conception of it that has distorted the normal to make it look paranormal, but actually it's our sense of normalcy that is actually the weird thing here. It's kind of flipping it around its head. And I can give you a very concrete example of this before we go into some specifics here about these topics. You know, when I was in graduate school, <coughs> excuse me a second, smoke's getting to me. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I learned that uh, when you had outliers from your statistical models, you could just toss these out, right? Toss out the outliers and keep the data that was clustered around the mean of your bell curve. But perhaps that was the wrong way to do things. Perhaps it's the outliers that matter, the outliers that we should be paying attention to. And it's putting ourselves at risk by ignoring things that deviate from the norm. I mean, the coronavirus itself was something that wasn't considered a very high probability of spreading throughout the planet. Or if people had believed that, they would have been funding all these coronavirus research sites. Uh, some of these labs actually went under just uh, earlier in 2019. They were looking at, I was reading about a place in Texas, a lab that was looking for funding for a vaccine for coronavirus, and they couldn't get anyone to fund them. Can you believe that in early 2019? Couldn't get any funding, needed a few million dollars, couldn't do it. They went out of business. So uh, it's these outliers that can sometimes really matter more than the mainstream topics. And I'm wondering, I'm sure you are too, whether we've been brainwashed into this sense of normalcy so that people who've had these experiences that don't fit the norm have been kind of ridiculed and made fun of and chastised and even threatened. Uh, it's impacted their careers when they report experiences that don't fit the norm. I mean, just think of airline pilots. You know any airline pilots? I've spoken to a whole bunch over the years and they tell me they've seen things and they haven't reported it. <laughs> they haven't reported it because they have to get a psych evaluation if they see an object that society says is not supposed to be there. Now, is that fair? I don't think so, but this is why we haven't had the reporting of the so-called paranormal phenomena that we should have been having for decades. I mean, finally, the U.S. Navy has said, 
earlier, uh, it was last year, wasn't it, where they came out and said, we're not going to uh, penalize naval pilots for reporting UFOs. And I just read, thanks to Twitter, people posted this clip from Japanese news that there was a meeting between uh, Japanese self-defense forces and the U.S. Department of Defense, and they brought up the topic of UFOs, about reporting UFOs. And Japan said they're going to start a reporting regime for UFOs. So just think of how much data we've lost for decades uh, because we've insisted on people fitting this certain mold of what you're allowed to see. And if your perceptions go beyond that, you get a psych evaluation, your career could be hurt. I mean, we interviewed PJ Hughes not too long ago. We interviewed him in, in Laughlin at the UFO MegaCon and his three other colleagues, Kevin Day, Jason Turner, and Gary Voorhees. But we had Patrick on again recently on a live stream. I mean, maybe you saw it. And uh, we had people commenting about how many people, in, you know, in the live chat, how many people on the Nimitz or Princeton probably saw or knew about these events from the Tic Tacs, 2004, already 16 years ago, uh, who probably haven't talked about it because it could impact their careers. We know that one of the female pilots still hasn't come forward because, you know, they don't, whatever reason. But, you know, how many thousands of people are out there from the Nimitz that saw something, heard something that didn't say anything? So what my point is here is, have we all been having these experiences the whole time since you and I have been here on the planet of phenomena that are not officially considered to be real that you've experienced and you're not talking about or your friends aren't talking about believe you me i've encountered witnesses to these ufos perhaps extraterrestrial vehicles from some other place in the galaxy or another galaxy intergalactic vehicles who still haven't come forward to say what they've seen even though they've told me you know at conferences uh, exactly what they've looked at, these materials and so forth. And they won't come forward. I, I have a number of witnesses who haven't wanted to come forward yet about what they've seen for, for any number of reasons, the ridicule, the impact on the careers, whatever. But my point is this, are we missing a huge amount of data that would connect these phenomena and make more sense of the reality we live in? And what got me going on this recently isn't just these uh, kind of anomalous wildfires and COVID and all that. It's actually looking at the anomalies I've experienced in and around crop circles. Now, I've reported on this for many years, and you've, you've heard this. Uh, we've seen batteries and cameras fail in and around crop circles over and over again. But this isn't the only place you get batteries and cameras failing. Where else do you find this? You find this in haunted locations where there are poltergeists, where there are ghosts, where there are UFO sightings. Remember this NICAP report uh, from Gordon Lore uh, that you may have seen, which is really worth reading. This report, I believe, from the 60s, 70s, where they had lots of examples of effects of UFOs on vehicles, electronics, even frightening people's pets and so forth, like things like that. Uh, so you have this sort of strange electromagnetic interactions and it, uh, kind of events of things going on the fritz, so to speak, when you uh, are around these phenomena. And it's not only UFOs and ghosts and crop circles. Yes, it's Bigfoot. Bigfoot. <laughs> Where are you, Mr. and Mrs. Bigfoot? We get these reports of cars stalling batteries draining and so forth around Bigfoot also. And where also do we get some examples of this? Yes, cold fusion exp uh, experiments from Bob Greenier and others. I hope you've had a chance to look at this on the Martin Fleischman Memorial Project on YouTube. You know, Bob Greenier's done some just amazing research bringing together cold fusion, low energy nuclear reaction, and the commonalities that have been in this research ever since Nikolai Tesla where I bet you would have also had batteries and cameras failing around some of his equipment. In no low energy nuclear reaction, as Rob Greener has described to us, you get strange radiation tracks, these self-contained plasmas, magnetic monopoles, and so forth. So I think you can see where I'm going with all this. I'm not claiming to have all the answers, but are all these phenomena connected in some way 
some indirect way, perhaps, or maybe a direct way, but even loosely in the sense that it's not that they're paranormal, it's that we're the strange ones who've limited our reality so much that it seems that anything that out is outside the box is weird. But maybe these phenomena are not weird at all. It's just that our viewpoint has been so limited, we've been avoiding and censoring the data, as I was told to do in graduate school, of the outliers. And maybe they're not the outliers, maybe the outliers are the majority, and it's this kind of narrow sense of normalcy that's in the minority of our worldview. And so where you would end up with looking at the, at things, you know, from this point of view is that we're in this kind of little bubble of reality. Perhaps everything that science knows so far formally is less than 5% of our reality. And the remaining 95% we don't understand, which would fit with the amount of dark matter and dark energy in the universe, right? We don't understand that either. And that's 95% of our reality just in this universe alone. We can't see it, we can't identify it, but it affects things gravitationally. So the main point here is, is there a bigger reality that we've been ignoring? Because just like in that book, Flatland, which I mentioned in Opening Minds, you know, Flatland, the story of Edwin Abbott, 18, when did he write this, 1890s or something? A parody of Victorian England, where the elites know that it's a three-dimensional world, but they wanna keep everyone on this flat, reality on a tabletop because they can control them. And people that say they've seen three dimensional objects, you know, are sent to insane asylums or to jail or something like this. And maybe that's the way it's been. We've just been limiting our sense of reality and what we consider to be outliers, black swan events and so forth are actually normal things. But our sense of reality has kind of flipped it around to make them look strange and paranormal and anomalous and psychic and all that. And maybe that is really what normalcy is. It's that things are interconnected and there's beings and entities and phenomena that we haven't uh, really talked about formally in science or in any sort of formal setting. So they seem strange, but they're only strange because we're not familiar with them. And just to give you one more example of this, uh, of a phenomena that shows up in all of these types of uh, processes and events, which I just mentioned. Orbs and balls of light, seen in and around crop circles, seen in and around haunted sites, seen around Bigfoot. Why? Does Bigfoot have these little orbs that he tosses or is it because we're dealing with a larger multidimensional reality that has those things as part of it when you see through it to other sorts of events going on there you see some of the same characters and entities that exist in that reality. And so balls of light, you see Bigfoot sightings have balls of light sometimes, UFO sightings, obviously. And where also do we find balls of light, these microscopic balls of light, of course, in cold fusion, low energy nuclear reaction experiments, they're called exotic vacuum objects, right? Charge clusters charged clusters of electrons, densely packed electrons. But what are they in the most common language? They're balls of light. Same thing. So we see these phenomena across a range of uh, processes and events. And it's not that there is a continuum of weirdness again, as George Knapp, you know, the great uh, journalist and UFO researcher, we all you know, love George Knapp. Well, he says it's kind of a continuum of weirdness, but maybe it's not the weird. We're the ones that weird because we're trying to force reality into a box that it won't fit. Now, one of the things I specifically read about this, uh, which is I found really interesting, was the most recent issue of Edge Science magazine that comes out of the journal uh, Society for Scientific Exploration, which I've been a member of for a long time. They recently had this article about the relationship between Bigfoot and poltergeists. And this is where it really sort of raised all these issues again, is you get these sort of haunted sort of poltergeist type, you know, activity around Bigfoot sightings sometimes. Uh, it's not actually technically not a poltergeist, but you get, you know, the stones throwing 
and sort of strange activity, things moving without any visible means of propulsion. And the author of this article raised the question is, you know, is it possible that what we call Bigfoot is being produced by spirits and poltergeists? Uh, it's not quite clear. Does the Bigfoot activity, you know, summon poltergeists? Or how are they related? And this is how I came to the idea that perhaps these are all manifestations of the same sort of multiverse phenomenon. In other words, where you sort of pierce the veil, you're not just going to have one phenomena show up. You're going to have several because they all coexist at the same time in the space that they're in. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm thinking about right now. So let me know your comments. Do you agree, disagree? You know, put them in the comments below. I always enjoy your comments and your, uh, your points of view on this. And uh, thanks again for watching. You stay safe wherever you are. We'll see you next time. Take care for now and bye.